Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. And thank you for coming from all over the world and, and making my channel what it is. With all the lovely people that comment and all the wonderful comments that they make, it's just a, an amazing group that I really do appreciate. So I have four items for today's news. The first one is titled Desperation Behind European Politicians' Latest Russiagate Hoax. Now, <clears throat> this is an interesting article because, it is to me anyway, because um, we should all, I guess, be familiar by now with the Russiagate hoax that was uh, pulled on Trump in, in uh, the 2016 election and basically haunted his presidency. He had to fight against it most of the time. But now... Apparently, European politicians have picked up on this and they're starting their own version of it. I'm just going to read you a little bit and I'll put the link in the description so you can read it yourself. European politicians claimed late last month that Russia bribed European politicians to spread disinformation and interfere in the upcoming June elections. Russia, Russian influence scandal rocks EU screamed a March 30th Politico headline. Russia, quote, is using dodgy outlets pretending to be media and using money to buy covert influence, claimed European Commission Vice President Vera Tora, uh, <laughs> Jur, boy, some of these names, Jurova, I guess it would be pronounced, J-O-U-R-O-V-A. The BBC agreed, Russian network that paid European politicians busted, authorities claim. Heads of state hyped the allegations, the alleged scandal. We uncovered a pro-Russian network, claimed Peter Fiala, the prime minister of the Czech Republic, that was developing an operation to spread Russian influence and undermine security across Europe. The article goes on to talk about what they've uncovered, and it turns out they really haven't uncovered anything. They have no evidence. They have no proof whatsoever of any of the allegations that they're making. After two weeks of hysteria, the German media are now backing away from the claim that right-wing nationalist politicians with the Alternative for Democracy Party in Germany took money from the Russians. The mainstream German media are now charming, now claiming, like von der Leyen, that it doesn't matter if the politicians took any Russian money since they do what the Russians want. So <clears throat> basically what's happened is they made some claims about the Russians paying politicians. When those claims couldn't be proven, they backed off too well, but they're doing what the Russians want anyway. <laughs> Czech intelligence officials claim that a fringe website, Voice of Europe, was the, the vector of Russian disinformation. The origin of the Voice of Europe story dates back to October 4th, 2023, when Czech journalist Wojtek Berger reported with, about the website. On March 27th, 2024, the Czech government put Voice of Europe and two names associated with it on a sanctions list. Now, you know, they can do this without any proof whatsoever. And so, just like with Donald Trump, what we, what we found out when, when they started investigating after several years of, of hearing this story over and over again was that, yes, the Russians had made some minor tweets about the American elections and they had, uh, quote, quote, interfered in a very small way, but they had done nothing like what was being claimed. And... I would be willing to bet you that America does the exact same thing in Russian elections and in Chinese, do they have elections in China? I don't know if they do, uh, but in, in elections of governments that they're either opposed to or they want to influence, you know, everybody does it, okay? One purpose of European leaders' Russiagate hoax is to discredit their political enemies. 
The German AFD opposes the platforms of leading centrist parties in Europe. The AFD party wants to stop military support to Ukraine. It opposes immigration and its members like former United States President Donald Trump. And then it goes on to talk more about it and about how they don't have any proof of the claims they're making. And then it, I highlighted this one last statement. Once again, the politicians have illegally weaponized intelligence agencies just like they did in the U.S. against Trump. And the article closes with this. But it is increasingly transparent that von der Leyen and her allies are trying to justify in the public eye a ban on anonymous crypto payments and further restrictions on cash payments approved on 19 March this year. This is a dangerous step toward defunding independent media, political dissidents, and whistleblowers. And that's the reason for it, if you want to be honest. They're hoping they can do exactly that. They, they want to shut down all opposition to their uh, leadership. The European Russiagate hoax is but a two-week window of cheap spy tales per country. Desperate incumbents try to make the most of this one in campaign opportunity. Most of this one in campaign opportunity. The Belgian Prime Minister is right tongue-in-cheek. We must be vigilant. It is important that truly independent media do not let politicians abuse their power and run the, this bleak hoax any higher. Well, as we learned with Donald Trump, they'll milk it for everything it's worth. You know that, right? Meanwhile, in Brussels, cops are breaking up conservative meetings. Now, this one is really disturbing. This group apparently has met several years before without any opposition. But this year, which is an election year, by the way, all of a sudden they're being stopped. <clears throat> As of 5 p.m. local time today, the local Brussels police were not letting people into an event of conservatives in Brussels. They were letting people exit, but they were not letting them back in. The National Conservation Con Conference was full of famous conservatives, political leaders in Europe, including UK Brexit leader Nigel Farage, former UK Government Home Secretary Suelo Braverman, and French presidential candidate Eric Zamu, who police blocked from entering. <laughs> it just... What's behind the back crackdown, it asks, and it goes through what's going on. And it closes with this. A representative for Czech Free Speech Defense Society told public, we were shocked by the intervention. We have attended several conservative conferences during our existence, and nowhere have we encountered such a pure display of totalitarianism. And that's what it is. If you're not willing to allow the opposition to your ideas to be presented to the public, then you're a totalitarian. It's that simple. There's no way to get around that. That's the definition of totalitarianism, is that you do not allow opposing views. And that's exactly what's going on. I have two other uh, articles that I'm going to give to you in the links, but I'm not going to cover them on screen here. <clears throat> the first one is uh, a Tucker Carlson interview with the uh, founder of Telegram, Pavel Duro, Duroff. Pavel Duroff. Uh, it's about an hour long. It's a very interesting uh, interview. This guy has, says that he has more than $100 million in the bank, and yet he doesn't own anything. He has no real estate. He has no jets. He has no... Uh, what was it he said? Uh, no yachts. <laughs> he, he, he prefers to just run his company. And he has no HR department in his company. He runs it himself. They have 30 engineers. 
And if you're at all familiar with Telegram, you know that it's an app that is encrypted from one end to the other and including on the Telegram servers. So there's no way that anyone can get into it. And what he talks about is how when he created Telegram, the FBI came to him and asked him to put a back door in it. And he said, no, he's not going to do it. And he lives in Dubai, so he's outside the jurisdiction of the United States, so they can't do much to him except beg him. And he refuses to comply. Unlike most of the social media companies like Meta, which is Facebook and Google and all those folks who happily turn over you know, cu customer information to the authorities. Pavel Durov says, no, I'm not doing that. And as a result, and by the way, they have not done any advertising at all for what is called customer acquisition. They don't spend a dime on getting customers and they have over 900 million. They're signing up over a million people a month. So uh, I've had Telegram for a while. Uh, I don't really use it very much. I use it just a little bit. Uh, but Tucker Carlson announced a, uh, that he had created a channel where he would send out his notices about his shows. And so I subscribed to that. And then I got to thinking about it, and I may implement this. I'm still, I'm still thinking about the idea and the, and the implications of it and how to do it. But I created a channel on uh, Telegram called Vietnam Era Vet Speaks Out. And my thinking was, that, though I don't, if you're not familiar with the way channels work on Telegram, basically it's a one-to-many type interface. So one person can send out messages to a lot of people. So what I was thinking that I might do is I might send out a notice each day of what the upcoming reactions are so that people know what's coming up. And, you know, if, if you're interested in that, I'd appreciate hearing from you to say, yes, I think it's a good idea, or no, I wouldn't bother with it. I want to get a feel for whether or not people really would be interested in doing something like that. But anyway, if you haven't used Tucker, if you haven't used Telegram or you haven't downloaded it, I would suggest you do because it's a way to communicate with friends and family and anyone that you know that can't be invaded by a government, any government. It's completely encrypted from end to end. So whatever you do on there is truly private and there isn't much at all on on an electronic world that's private nowadays so telegram will make your discussions with your family private and they can't be pried on by by your government and finally the last article that i have is massive crowds in japan rally against who pandemic treaty uh, the world health organization is trying to create a treaty that basically would establish a centralized uh, government, basically, to handle all pandemic responses worldwide. So if you think whatever your government did during the COVID-19 pandemic was bad, imagine what it'd be like if it's done by somebody by a small group of people somewhere in Europe that could care less about you or your country. And as we all know now, none of the responses to the pandemic were based on science. So imagine what it'd be like to have that. So there was a huge, uh, there were huge demonstrations in Japan rallying against the treaty. I don't know if it'll do anything to stop it, but uh, as, as individuals in our, each of our countries, we need to be making our uh, politicians aware of the fact that we have zero interest in a worldwide pandemic treaty that establishes a one world government. So that's the news for today. As always, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy all your life and that you'll live for a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. 
And I pray he will do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.